Hey guys, my name's Dan, and well, I'm just gonna start off by saying if uh, I end up getting taking too long to get to things, just know that you can skip ahead in these videos, and uh, I think you can also play them. Uh, you can play them pretty well. You can play them back faster. So, but anyway, so uh, direct wave here. I uh, was trying to do some certain things in some projects, and uh, I'm not gonna go into like all the different stuff you can do with it and whatnot because that'd be too long and boring probably, especially for somebody with my skill level of explanation and tutorial endeavoring. But the thing that I wanted to be able to do that I'm doing in this track is to put everything kind of more of in a simple structure. And so in this, in this instance, I'm trying to get everything that I can actually into one pattern clip. Now, I'm not saying it's like the most feasible thing or the best thing to do, but I'm just trying to see like how best I could go about working it in and still allow it to be functional. So one of the things, of course, is with the percussion, uh, let me just bring this window. Whoops, Let's see if I can move it now. Why won't you allow me move? There you go. So, in, your, in the piano roll, you got your different layers, right? So you got different instruments, and whatever pattern clip that you click onto is going to give you that layer of piano roll, which is basically what what. The, which lay each layer is basically a port is basically and then within that port you got your 16 MIDI channels right here, right? So the the thing that I wanted to be able to do is that instead of having my other instruments grayed out because they're associated with other ports I wanted them to all be associated with the same port so that their notes would show up uh, And I wouldn't have to switch layers in order to edit them although you can do editable editable ghosts, but in this instance, sometimes you have to write right over the ghost and some, it's inconvenient to click off of wherever the ghost is to then, you know, slide the note back over it again. So I don't have editable ghosts on, but at the same time, it's also hard to tell exactly what notes those belong to unless you have, you know, that whatever your, your layer active or you've kept everything so significantly different that you and you've been able to memorize where you've put stuff within your key range. So, but anyway, so with the, instead of using the regular sampler and then uh, use you know and go into the different layers and then um, triggering your hats and your kicks and other, you know claps or whatever you, and uh, you know whatever other instruments you want to use uh, if you used I found that if you use direct wave you uh, see up here you got these different programs and these different programs are different MIDI channels so 1 through 16 right and so you click on what channel you want and you load uh, a sample into there and then that's, you know, for that MIDI channel. And so I've already got a, I've got a couple of hats up here already. And as you can see, I got uh, one of them is on channel one, which is the green. And then the channel two is the, the off green headed to turquoise color. And, and I'll get to the outputs later. Uh, and then so now I, got, I added a kick, right? So I got my kick that I want to use. And also, uh, along with, you see how these are separate, but you have to match the root note, right? So the root note actually can be matched if you go to the, uh, the pro, or the, I can't remember. It's, oh yeah, this, this tab here, the program tab, not the multi-bank tab. So you go to that sample of whatever color you, you, you make its root note. So uh, actually I actually haven't adjusted this one appropriately. So F5, this is C5 right here, so I'll just, right click on F5 and then now my hat is uh, more correctly pitched than it was before. And then so my other hat is A5, I go to channel two and then I already have that selected. And my kick is on actually is on the third one, but it is already, um, even though it's layered on a sampler, a previous sampler, um, I can still um, if I don't, if I don't remember how I timed things, I can look at the editable ghosts. And then after I get my timing down, I can delete that old sampler off. But so, uh, so the kick here, um, I don't know why they don't allow you to hear it by clicking on it. Uh, let me see here. So that's the kick. And, uh, so yeah. I don't know why you can't just click on it like you can the sampler, but so 
so this is all you've got this all done up and then it's this member okay yep it's on number three so go to your piano roll thing uh, number three and the root nut C5 and then since I don't have editable ghosts on I can click right on the old ghosts and um, that is supposed to be okay that's the other one that's the that's not the direct wave that's the um, all right so I did do that whoops whoops that's not the correct MIDI color so you got to stay on top of it, I suppose, to get everything to you. Otherwise, you could be. OK, I do believe this is just a repetitive pattern. Let's see the one, the three and the and then the end of four. One, two. Th so the three and then the end of four and then the one and then, then the three and then the end of four. So and then for uh, maybe some people out there that really don't know, uh, you can you highlight. Ooh. OK, so. Um, you, you can you highlight the timeline that is, you know, ends and then repeat. So um, they got two measures going on here, right? And I want to I want to copy these over, but I don't want to. These ones are already copied. So um, just uh, you got your timeline, and then just highlight the these notes here, and then it's Control B, and then uh, that's probably right. Yeah. I'm, Probably not quite right. There are probably some differences in there, but I'll get to that. So anyway, so it's, you know, it's really good, right? But, okay, so the thing that I uh, was talking about is the outputs. So this wouldn't do a whole lot of good unless you could change the outputs. And so the kick uh, is obviously not, you're not going to want to add the same outputs as the hat. So, um, so you go to your three, you go to your multibank. And so you got your kick selected. So it says output channels one. And I, at first I was like, I'm not sure. Like you can't like nothing like, you know, if you right click on it, it doesn't really like say anything. But so you got to double click on it. And so if you if you select two, it's going to select the one uh, beyond it. And. So for each sequential number, it will uh, map further up your uh, your buses, your 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 bus pane, your whatever you want to call it. Uh, anyway, so that's and then that's, so that's how you get your things mapped. Now, obviously, I I don't have mine labeled correctly because I just kind of came up upon this, but this is kind of uh, so I want it to be beyond it. Um, as far as I know, and then just enter, and then uh, so I'll play a kick, and uh, let's see, I got three, so now it's coming out of channel four, whereas one is on uh, channel three. It's anyway, like I know words and 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 what things are called and whatnot, and it's just sometimes a cat gets my tongue. I, I know what this is that this this called down here. This is this the mixer, frack. Okay, so um, I don't. Um, I don't, I wonder what happens if you select zero. Now it just goes to one. I wonder if you could do, can you do negative? Nope. I was thinking maybe it could let you go backwards in your mixer, but, um, okay. So that's anyway, that's, so that's the thing. So you can, you got your different MIDI channels so you can have, uh, you could do all your editing and, and you know, up to 16 different instruments in this case, and then you have to use an additional port or a layer. But anyway, I thought it was really cool. Like, so you could have, so you know the color, uh, you know, helps you determine the instrument that you're using, plus whatever note you um, set the root note for so that uh, it triggers it appropriately. Because you don't, you know, if you had all these notes over the same, uh, the same spot, you know, then that kind of defeat the purpose of, of this whole thing of you know using one layer to to see everything but anyway so that's kind of the kind of the thing with this so it's you just set your outputs there and uh and uh and you got and so there's uh, you know beyond this there's some really cool editing options and whatnot you can do with each of the samples and how you want them to play basically it's uh it's a really cool sampler and uh and i don't know i think you could simplify your 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 uh, arrangement window um, but you know, obviously, I'm using instruments in the same pattern clip, and, and 
I probably won't actually end up doing that in this track. I'll probably end up um, doing something a little bit differently. But I thought I should make a little video on that real quick just to see if it'll help anybody out there who's kind of wondering about this thing using FL Studio. And I, I really like it. I using this program. I think it's really cool. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this gets your juices flowing a little bit and uh, you have some fun making music. If you watch this far into the video, I appreciate it. And uh, throw it a, a like so that uh, the old YouTube algorithm throws this video out there. Otherwise, it will, it'll, it'll be among my collection of videos that gets five views in one year. So, but you know, I guess that, I guess that's kind of um, attributed towards uh, my skill and ability to be an entertainer, because most people are looking for some kind of entertainment when they're learning, and don't blame them. Can't be boring. Anyway, thanks for your guys' time. Have a good one.